I'm male, 25. My parents, Lisa and Drew, if I can call them that, kicked me out of the house because of my brother John, male, 18. I put parents in quotes because, well, they acted like complete jerks to me as a teen, and secondly because they're my parents legally but not biologically. My mom is my aunt, and I was only a few months old when my biological parents passed away in a car crash. As my godmother, she took me in, and for the first few years of my life, I was coddled and loved by my adoptive parents. They had trouble conceiving and used to take care of me as if I was their child. However, this all changed when Lisa got pregnant with John, even though they had given up all hope of conceiving. Suddenly, it seemed like a massive gift from God himself. And they took it as a sign that John was going to grow up to be one of the greatest people on this earth. While I'm a religious man myself, both Lisa and Drew were next level and a little overboard with their ideas on faith and thought that this meant that all of their resources should be devoted to raising John and John alone. And after his birth, they began to see me more and more as just an extra mouth to feed. I was emotionally neglected for a good part of my childhood, and if not for the good friends I made in school, I would probably be in a much darker place right now. I say emotionally neglected because, well, no matter what, I was still given food to eat and a roof to live under, but Lisa and Drew never stopped letting me know how much of a burden I was to them. When I turned 16, they actually told me that they wanted me to start paying them rent which I recently found out is actually illegal, and I obliged because I was desperate to win their approval. As twisted as it sounds, they were still my only source of authority, and I wanted to be in their good books. I always went out of my way to do as much as possible in the house, and I was often tasked with taking care of John or making sure he got exactly what he wanted. Honestly, sometimes I feel less like his brother and more like his nanny, Things were terrible. No questions about it. I had healthy ways of dealing with this through my friendships and my passion. I actually started hanging out a lot with my best friend Jess and his family and his dad took me in as an apprentice mechanic at his garage when I was 16. Mostly on my initiative as I had rent to pay. I found a passion for cars and Jesse and I always dreamed about expanding his dad's business all through the Midwest. I sat down with Drew and Lisa and discussed whether I could go to college and study engineering and a minor in business. They said I could do this, but also stated that they wouldn't be able to provide any help with the college fees. They even said they wouldn't co-sign on any student loans. In all this time, I could see my stepbrother constantly getting expensive gifts and being coddled 24-7. Help. He even went to a private school, although it made things tighter for everyone in the house. So the whole shucks can't help out angle was complete BS. I filled out a FAFSA form and decided to go for a federal student loan and got accepted to a pretty decent college. I'd also been working hard at the garage and was making solid money for a teenager. When my 18th birthday came by, Drew sat me down and said that he was going to politely ask if I could move out. I was taken aback by this since, I mean, I was already paying rent. When I questioned him and asked, listen, I know you guys don't want me here, but I've been a good person all this time. Even if you don't think of me as a son, I've been a good tenant. And I eventually forced a response out of him. Drew said, well, OP, you have been a nice person to have, but remember, you're still eating and living with us, doting on you, and I wanted you to know that your mother and I are getting exhausted with this ambitionless freeloading. I couldn't believe my ears. I couldn't deal with this attack. And I shouted back at him that the only ambitionless freeloader here was their pampered son, and I'd be more than happy to move out. I didn't even know where I could go, but I called Jesse and he said I could crash at his place for a while. Effectively, kicked out by Drew and Lisa, I packed whatever I had and moved to Jesse's, effectively ending any contact I had with them. My time with Jesse and his family was way better than what I had experienced beforehand. Mr. Green, Jesse's dad, was super friendly and paternal and offered to help me with paying off my student loans. I went to college in the neighboring big city and worked various odd jobs to sustain myself. 
and eventually came back to work with Jesse at his dad's business again. I also expanded my horizons at college and presented big ideas on growing the garage, which both of them took on with gusto. Unfortunately, Mr. Green passed away two years ago and he never got to see how big his business has grown. Jesse took over and I came on as a partner. We've got over five branches operating now and I just moved into my first house. As my fortunes went up, I observed Drew and Lisa's fortunes go the opposite way. Word travels fast in a small town like ours. Drew got laid off from his job last year and they had a fire at home which significantly ate into their savings. John recently turned 18 and has his heart set on attending an Ivy League college in New York. However, he didn't put in the effort to be accepted with a scholarship and due to the situation the family is in right now, it doesn't seem like it will be possible for him to go. I watched on silently and gloated a little bit, secretly. But to my surprise, I found a letter in my mailbox from my parents. I had no idea what to expect, and I opened it to read about Drew and Lisa's sincere realization that they had not done right by me or by my bio parents through their treatment. John was, at the end of the day, a kid. A decent kid, very spoiled, but not an amazing genius. They told me they had been watching on as I had worked my way up in the world, and they wanted me to mentor John and come back to the family. Honestly, it was a pretty sweet letter, but when I flipped it over, my blood began to boil. These jerks wrote that I was now the most successful person in the family, and they wanted me to chip in to send John to college by, guess what, co-signing his loan and covering the payments. The letter mentioned that John would pay me back as soon as he could, but they needed this to make sure he doesn't miss out on admission this year. I haven't responded to the letter yet, and I spoke to Mrs. Green and Jesse about it too. Jesse says that I don't owe them jack shit, and honestly, I'm inclined to agree. But Mrs. Green said that I could at least have a word with them. If I wanted, I could even draw up a contract with them to ensure it's not just a handout. That last part did make me wonder if I could just shell out the money and maybe there could be a chance at creating a connection with them. Is it worth it though? Update 1. So I did a lot of thinking and decided on this. I would let Drew and Lisa borrow money from me at a rate that is favorable compared to a bank and that should be able to cover John's college education. I responded to the letter and we met up in the town plaza. Drew and Lisa both seemed genuinely remorseful and John, well, John seemed a little clueless as to how he had hurt me by just existing. I don't think that's too unbelievable though. That kid doesn't know how to pick up on emotional cues. When I mentioned my offer, my parents were a little taken aback. Drew said, um, OP, I know you must not think the amount you're giving us is a lot. Surely you don't need to turn a profit when it comes to your family, right? I coolly replied that we stopped being family the day I was kicked out of the house, and the only reason I felt like I had to do this was to respect my bio mom's memory by helping out her sister and to give them an out on a situation beyond their control. I was basically just being a good Samaritan. I could tell that Lisa still wanted to accept the offer, but Drew was a little hesitant. He said that they were thankful, but would consider other options. I said, good luck, and we left civilly enough. Update 2. What do you know? They couldn't find a single other option that was feasible. Jesse and I were thinking of moving the business to a new state, and I needed every cent I could spare to go into acquiring a new property, setting up our infrastructure, and finding good mechanics. We had exchanged numbers previously, and due to that, Drew had called me asking if the offer still stood. I explained that I had already put my money into something else, and due to that, I wasn't willing to provide a loan that would only be repaid after a four-year college education. I did suggest that John could take a federal student loan, same as I did, a jab, I admit, or they could simply consider sending him to a different college. I mean, the kid wanted a degree in journalism. In my opinion, there wasn't a need to travel to New York just for that. With the kind of resources we have on the internet now, he could be freelancing or writing already at his age. When I said no, I sensed a hint of the old poison in Drew's attitude when he snarkily said, Fine, have it your way. We know John 
will still be a successful person and you'd wish that you had helped him out when he just got started and cut the call. I couldn't help but chuckle at this and decided that I could effectively bury this situation forever. I don't think there'll be any more updates because I'm not reaching out to these people again. Update 3. I need to tell you guys that my ex-family is going to get hell rained upon them. It's crazy to come back to this post after months. I'm too angry to think. But John decided to write an article about electric mobility and how bad and scammy mechanics are and directly targeted my business. It clearly looks like it was written to solve a personal vendetta. And it even has interviews from people who work at my place which were anonymized. I'm positive those interviews are faked, but due to the source confidentiality, it's impossible to prove it. Nevertheless, I publicly responded to the article and have taken legal action against it for defamation. He wrote it for a college journal, which has been floating around on social media to push the environmental agenda. I mean, I respect clean energy, but only borderline eco-terrorists are supporting the article at this point. Update 4. Lots going on. We'll keep this quick. Someone on John's reporting team ratted him out, and we have evidence proving half the article is faked. I'm not letting this go lightly, and I'm suing John for everything he's worth. His life is ruined, and I'm more than happy it is. NTA, this was a roller coaster ride. You're a real G for the way you came up. And I hope your business keeps growing, brother. Next story. My mom and my wife do not get along. That is actually an understatement. They can hardly manage to be in the same room. But we get along great with the rest of the family, as does my mom, and neither is willing to sit out of family stuff. My wife does get overwhelmed by my mom and everyone tends to gather around my mom so our therapist suggested that she bring something she can do when she needs a break so she has been bringing crochet. My mom got annoyed by this and said it was rude and something a five-year-old would do and said if she ever brought something to our house and tried to go into the other room and ignore us we would raise hell. To be fair that is kind of true. My wife is really big on manners, but doesn't always uphold the standards she holds my mom to. So I told my mom that wasn't true. I joked my mom could learn how to crochet, because none of her hobbies is something you can bring to someone else's house. Recently, we hosted a family get-together, and my mom had a large bag when she showed up. I honestly didn't think anything of it. We were all outside, and my mom casually told me she needed a break, so I said that was perfectly fine. See no double standard? She can go inside and chill. My uncle later went in to get a beer and came out laughing and said, I need to see what my mom is doing. My wife and I ran inside and my mom was working on an art project at our coffee table. She had resin, glitter, beads and shells and my wife lost it and began screaming. My mom said we were being hypocrites and she was doing exactly what my wife did. Her hobby is just messier. I told her to get out, cussed at her and said she was banned. She said okay and then told us the glitter on the floor isn't her fault. Her husband did that. I told her to get the frick out and never come back. She got glitter and tiny beads on the rug and resin on the table. My aunt and uncle defended her and said I was being unfair. My wife is super rude to bring crochet to family stuff. My aunt said, if my mom is banned from our house, we are banned from hers, and I can't go to Thanksgiving. My cousins tried to defend me, but my aunt was serious. Even my cousins after the fact said it was kind of funny and not that big of a deal. Edit. Previously, we did get mad at my mom for trying to remove herself from situations. She also calls my mom out every time she's rude, but to be honest, can be pretty rude to my mom as well. She also got mad that my mom wouldn't eat her cooking and called her a toddler, but went to my mom's feast of seven fishes on Christmas Eve and was gagging because she hates seafood. The biggest blowout was probably when my wife got mad at my mom for jumping into some guy's arms and kissing him, and then later that night sat on my lap in front of everyone, and my mom was like, what the frick? My wife totally missed the point and was like, are you jealous because I took your son? My mom didn't talk to us for a while after that one and almost skipped our wedding. 
Yes, Sage. Yes, your wife isn't the a-hole for crocheting and your mom is the a-hole for bringing glitter into your home. But in general, your mom and your wife both sound like exhausting, unpleasant people to be around. Why is your wife so obsessed with your mom following etiquette? How is she getting overwhelmed by a person you describe as introverted? Why is your mom so theatrically offended by crocheting? Why do you and your wife jump straight to screaming and banning people from the house just because a guest does something rude? Is there a lot of alcohol involved or are you being filmed for a reality TV show? Unless there's a major issue behind the scenes like racism or theft or abuse, it's ridiculous for two grown adults to be having such a dramatic feud. Normal people don't get so bitterly angry over what essentially seems to be a basic personality clash. Next story. This drama has been caused by my dad's wife, wife number three, who I'll call Sue. Sue is an animal lover and activist, which my dad loves. However, she's also a blatant racist and homophobic. Zero to a hundred there, but unfortunately that's how it is. If there is an ist or phobic, she is it. Overall, she is not a pleasant person, but she is my dad's wife and the family has had to accept her. Recently, Sue has been complaining about how I am rude and horrible to her and make her feel uncomfortable in her home. I find this quite funny, to be honest, as I only see her about two or three times a year. I managed to fit quite a lot in. Background. My dad and Sue got married when I was 15. Sue had always hated children, so I was not invited to their wedding, but my two older sisters, over 21 years, were, and also her bridesmaids. Sue started to speak to me after I turned 19, but only to be rude. The difficult thing is Sue pretends to be nicer, civil is probably a better word, to me when my dad is around. As soon as my dad leaves the room, Sue completely changes. She will ignore me, make rude remarks about what I am doing or wearing, and generally be as mean and difficult as possible. She also does this with my sisters. Recently, my dad took me out for my birthday, and whilst we were talking, he said he had something important to discuss with me. He said that Sue had spoken to him and said that I have been extremely rude to her recently and be making her feel uncomfortable. Then he went on a five to ten minute lecture about how I need to be kind to her and he doesn't know why I am being rude when I am normally a nice person. During those ten minutes, I just sat there trying to process what he was saying and figure out what I had done. Whenever Sue is unkind to me or makes it uncomfortable, I will not retaliate or be rude as it will not help the situation. I tend to excuse myself to go to the bathroom for five minutes so I can sit quietly and think. Recently, it has been building up as my sisters don't stick around much anymore and I have been taking most of her bullying. I'll just sit and have a cry for two minutes to try and process feelings. Back to my birthday. After my character assassination, my dad left for a bit. When he returned, I had time to think about what he had said and the situation. So I decided to tell him my side of the story and what Sue is like when he's not around. Then he got annoyed at me for not accepting what he had said and for not apologizing for how horrible I've been. That he wished I had just kept it to myself. Stating that sharing my opinions with him isn't solving anything and just causing more issues for him. That he was going to support Sue and her feelings and that by telling him how I felt was running his hope for a happy family. Bearing in mind one of my sisters doesn't talk to him at all anymore and neither of my sisters have ever liked or gotten on with Sue, so I'm not sure how I'm the only person who is causing a problem. So AITA for telling my dad my side of the story? NTA, OP, dad's reaction had nothing to do with you. And the fact that your one sister is NC with him is very telling. His only concern here is his comfort and ease of life, and he's lashing out. Limiting contact is a healthy response. Stay tuned for more stories from Our Girl Relationships.